Today, we're talking about Xander and how to catch them from UK canals in small still waters. Today we're going to cover everything, rod, reel, mainline, leader, tactics, baits, hooks, everything. But we're going to start off, we're going to talk about the rods. Okay, now in my opinion, rods are one of the most important things when it comes to fishing for Xander, especially in canals and small still waters. The reason that is, is you need sensitivity and you need the right action. I've been through loads of different rods fishing, the UK canals in the Midlands and all over the country fishing for, for small Xander on canals and things like that. And I've had everything from 50 pound rods up to 300 pound rods. And they've all served a purpose. I finally settled on one that I think is absolutely perfect. Now this is the St. Croix Bass X. This is six foot 10. It is an extra fast action, which is one of the most important things. What you don't want is a really sort of through action parabolic rod when it comes to fishing for Xander. They've got very, very hard mouths, and you need that little bit of backbone just to set that hook. And we'll talk about that a bit more later, but that's why I feel like this rod absolutely fit the bill for me. Um, it's a medium light action, so it's you know it's not an ultra light rod. It's, I think it works out about three and a half to 14 grams, um, which may seem a little bit on the heavy side for most of your canal fishing, but on those days that you need that extra little bit of weight and that extra little power, you'll be glad you had it. Um, now, I've not been using this rod for all that long, but I have to say, Every fish I've hooked on it has been absolutely nailed. And uh, I do believe that the, the playing action is superior to everything else I've owned. So this is my choice. Now, there are other rods out there. This is just the one I've settled on. Um, again, there's everything from a 50 quid rod up to a 400 quid rod and beyond. But this, I feel, is a little bit middle of the road, and it suits me absolutely perfectly. Uh, I use my, my fishing rods as tools. They're not sort of pampered and, and polished and left on the shelf. I'm out fishing quite a lot. So I need something that can perform on a regular basis, isn't going to fall apart, and I can chuck it around a little bit. And it's just a nice, robust rod, which uh, fits the bill for me and my Xander fishing. Next up, your reel. Now, this is something I change and chop quite often, but at the moment, I'm using a 1,000 size Shimano Vanford. Um, I don't put a lot of onus in reels. You know, you can obviously go out and spend a fortune on reels. I don't really see the need. A lot of the sort of middle of the rangey reels nowadays have got absolutely perfect workings on the inners. Uh, the drags are good. The line lay is good. The retrieve ratio is what I'm after. I can't really, for me and my fishing, warrant going and spending four or five hundred pounds on a reel. If you can, great. It's not for me. Um, I, I say, I flip and flop. There's some other reels that I use are much cheaper than Vanford. This is just the one I've got on at the moment. It's the right size. It's nice and light. Holds the right amount of line for what I want. The retrieve ratio is good. This just suits me and my fishing, but I will swap and change depending on maybe I'm fishing a small river or a larger canal and things like that. I might up the size. Uh, I might want to change the retrieve ratio. But at the moment, this is what I'm fishing with, and it suits me just down to the ground. Okay, on to your main line. Now, for me, there is only one choice, and it has to be a braided main line. There are all arguments for and against it. Some people prefer to use a fluorocarbon or even in, in some situations a monofilament. But for me, and in my opinion, when it comes to sort of canal fishing and small still waters, a braid is far superior for 99% of the fishing situations. Now, it's another thing that I sort of flip and flop between. I change braids fairly frequently because I use them a lot and they do sort of wear out. The one I'm using at the moment is the favorite Smart PE uh, X8 and I'm using the sky blue one at the moment. I was using the orange one a little while ago. No real reason to change. I just fancy trying something different. Um, this is the 0 0.5 PE, which is about right for what I want from my, my Xander fishing. You could go finer, and I have gone finer in the past, but sometimes you know I use the same setup on rivers and things where you might run into the rogue pike, and you need that little bit of extra strength. Um, 
And talking of strength, it is nine pound or 4.1 kilo. Gives you a rough idea of its breaking strain. Now, obviously, with all breaking strains, take that with a little bit of a pinch of salt. I've started going by the diameter and the PE rather than the, the breaking strain as such. So the diameter of this is a 0.117 millimeter. Um, it's a really nice braid. I've used it a lot. It doesn't fray up a lot of braids, especially where you're casting frequently. They fray up where your fingers touch, and this one seems to be lasting great. I've had it on a reel a long time now. I haven't really had to chop much of it off. It doesn't, win not. Uh, I haven't really got a bad thing to say about it, but like I say, I do chop and change. It's not the cheapest of braids. I think it's about 30 odd quid a spool most places, um, but I have used more expensive braids like the YGK G Soul, which is lovely, um, and some cheaper braids as well, like the Daiwa J braid and things like that. This sort of one is sort of somewhere in the middle for me, uh, and I'm really enjoying using it. And I, like I said, can't say a bad word. But it is very much personal preference. And what I recommend is get the breaking strain right or your diameter and then try a few brands, see what you, see what you land on. This is just the one I'm using at the moment. Okay, so if you follow on down the braid, you're going to get to a leader. So again, leader is something I change very frequently depending on the situation I'm fishing in. Um, but... I'd say for a good 75% of my Xander fishing on canals, on small steel waters, this is my go-to. As you can see, the spool's a bit battered. Um, it's been living in my bag for a long time now. I think I've probably got about one more leader on this spool and I have to buy another one. This is the Seagar Real Soft in eight pounds or 0.235 millimeters or 3.63 kilos. Uh, I will change that breaking strain depending on how I'm fishing on the day. Um, but this is the one I use most of the time, eight pound. And I've got to say, again, maybe not the cheapest, this stuff is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've used some really cheap leader material before and it serves a purpose. Uh, and I've used some really, really expensive stuff and it's great as well. I just think this is really fits the bill for me and sits in that sort of middle ground. It's a bit of an ongoing theme with me. I don't like the really cheap stuff. I'm not a big fan of the massively expensive stuff. I like the sort of average down the line and the Seagar stuff, the real soft, really fits the bill. There are times I might want sort of a tougher leader material, something maybe a little bit stiffer. Uh, in that situation, I usually go to the Gunky Ice Fluorocarbon. Um, similar breaking strains, similar diameters, just a different purpose. This, the Seagar stuff is lovely and supple. The Gunky stuff is a little bit stiffer and a little bit more abrasion resistant. But sort of horses for courses on a day, depending on where I'm fishing and how I'm fishing, with what, what uh, tactics, would depend on what I'm using. But yeah, the Seagar, real soft, that's my go-to at the moment. Okay, let's get on to the nitty gritty and uh, the really important stuff, and that's what's right on the end of your leader. Now, I'm quite a boring angler when it comes to Xander fishing. I pretty much only fish two ways, and the second one I fish very, very infrequently. My favorite and go-to method is always going to be casting jig heads with shads. Now, it's not the most interesting way of fishing, but for me, it's exciting, it's active, I'm moving, I'm sort of covering water. I feel like if I can put a bait in front of a fish and they're hungry, I can get them to have a bite. Now, that might look absolutely tiny, and it is, but there's a good reason for it. I like to use as light as I can possibly get away with. A lot of the time on UK canals, there's little to no flow. Only when someone opens a lock gate or you know there's been some serious amounts of rain, do you get some sort of flow on them. So I like to get away with as light as possible. I think this is a 0.9 or maybe a 1 point something. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. But this is what I use for most of my Xander fishing. I will go up to about a 3 gram. And there's a situations and retrieves that change what size or what weight jig head I'm using. The really light ones are what I tend to use and what I call a sink and draw retrieve. So that'll be casting, letting your bait hit the bottom, one or two turns on the reel, quite slowly, haven't got to whip it up, just one, two, the lure will rise up off the bottom and then it will fall. That lovely light jig head gives that fall loads more time and that's when you're liable to get bites. Um, of course, sometimes you get them, you're just reeling up and there's a fish already there, or you're on the reel and you get a bang on the way up. But I'd say well over 80% of my takes on when that lure or shad is falling. So the lighter you can get away with, the better. Obviously, you need a little bit of casting weight. So under a gram sounds like very little, especially when I said earlier that the rod I like to use is a three and a half to 14 grams. But once you factor in the weight of your bait, and we'll get onto them in a minute, that's definitely over a few grams. Um, so that's just what I prefer to use. And like I said, sometimes I do like to go up to a two and a half, maybe three grams. And the reason I like to do that is if I'm using a straight retrieve. Like I said before, with the light one, it'll come up and it'll come down. Another way I like to fish for Xander is just on a really, really, really slow, slow roll. Now, what do I mean by slow roll? 
you're gonna cast, you're gonna let it hit the bottom. And what I like to do is just lift my tip up. So your rod's probably at about, I don't know, a 45 degree. And I'm just gonna reel really slowly. Now, what you want is that bait to just be, if this is your bottom of your canal, and this is your bait, you want it to just hover there. And you won't want it to sort of come up and down. You want it to just skim along the surface. So it's about balancing your leading material, balancing the weight you're using on your jig head, and balancing the size of your bait. All of those things factor in, and it's hard to sort of say there's a right or wrong answer. It's all about having a play and seeing what works for you in the canal you're fishing in the situation you're fishing in. But I'll just go really, really slow retrieve, and it's very it's painfully slow. If you think you're doing it slow enough, go slower. Um, and if you can get away with going to a lighter weight, go to a lighter weight. Um, I like to keep that slightly heavy one when I'm you know fishing with wind and things like that, or a bit of the flow, and then just really creep it. And on certain days, that could be absolutely deadly quite a negative way of fishing, it's quite slow, it takes you quite a long time to cover a lot of water, so it helps if you sort of know where the fish are gonna be anyway. But that's how, that's a situation where I'm up the jig size and uh, fishing a different way. Now, I did say there's two ways I like to fish, uh, and the second way is very, very seldom because I absolutely loathe fishing it, but it is effective, and that is drop shot. Now, drop shot is not something I like to do because it's so slow, it's so painfully negative, and any any chance I can get away with not fishing it, I will. But some days it's just the best way to fish. Now, with you can fish exactly the same bait as you do a jig head, just on a drop shot. And you remember what I was saying about hovering it? It's very easy to do that with a drop shot because you can set your hook at a certain distance from the lead and just slowly drag it along the bottom. Now, that's not the way I, I usually fish a drop shot because I would generally tend to fish a jig when that situation arises. I like to fish drop shot when I feel like Xander are going to be holding around structure like boats or lock gates or you know underwater structures anything like that anything i feel like xander are going to be bunched up in one area and i can keep my bait in the strike zone for longer again down to the nitty gritty what you're going to use so these are the hooks that i prefer to use my hook, my drop shot size will change depending on the size of bait these are the quantum four street drop shot hooks i think this is a size six or maybe a size four what i like about these is a few things they've got a nice welded eye so there's no chance of your line getting caught on the inside of the eye. They're incredibly sharp. And I, I will try and take a little bit of a close up of this, but there's a, a small painted section just on the bend of the hook there. And the way I sort of nose hook a lot of my baits, what it does is just helps hold it where you want the bait to sit. Uh, and yeah, these are absolutely brilliant. I've used these for lots of different situations, but especially for drop shot in the UK sort of canal zander, they're absolutely perfect. Uh, and then at the bottom of my drop shot, when it comes to weight, weight will change them depending on the day depending on how I want to fish, what's on the bottom, what sort of depth of the canal is, or small still water. Uh, just have a play, work out of what you want. If you want to keep your bait in one place for longer, try a little bit heavier. If you want it to sort of skip over bottom debris, go a little bit lighter. But have a play, different sizes, different shapes, you'll find what works for you. Okay, so now we're going to talk about something that is absolutely not a secret if you follow any of my social medias, and that is my number one all-time favourite UK canal Xander bait, and that is the Kitek Swing Impact Fat in black and 2.8 inch. Now, if I had a pound for every Xander I caught on this bait, I'd be a very, very lucky man. I've lost count of how many I've caught over the years, and on days where nothing else works, this seems to come through. I remember one day in particular where uh, I was catching fish quite regularly on this. I started switching up to different colors, different baits, couldn't get a bite. Went back to this and I topped up the day, I think over 40 Xander, which from any sort of UK canal is a brilliant day's fishing. There are the very odd occasion where I feel like black isn't the right color and it's not very often. Um, and that's when I will switch to maybe something more natural like this, exactly the same bait, Kitek Swing Impact Fat, 2.8 inch, but this is the IU. Um, there's other colours of these which I will switch through. This is just the one I'm sort of liking at the moment. Uh, the only time I will do that really is if the canals are very clear or I'm fishing a small steel water that hasn't sort of got the same muddy appearance that most of our UK canals have got. There's other situations where I might up the size. So this is a 2.8 inch. I might up to the 3.3 .3 and in some rare occasions a 3.8. The situations where I might do that, if the canal is really particularly dirty or if it's at night and I want to create a bigger silhouette or to displace more water to let those fish know my bait's there. Um, again, it will always be in black in those situations, but I'll just be going a little bit bigger. These baits, or this bait in particular, I could not be without, and it terrifies me when I'm running low on them. Um, this is without doubt 
my go-to. It's the first one out of my bag absolutely every time. Now, you could fish this on the jig heads, like I said, you know, casting or even fishing down the edge is very, very good with these. And you can also fish them on the drop shot, just dragging them along the bottom very, very slowly. That wrist on that towel is very, very, very fine. And it doesn't take a lot of movement to get that thing moving and let the Xander know they're there. So that is my absolute go-to when it comes to Xander baits. There are some situations where the Kitex swing impact fat isn't ideal, and it isn't very often, but this is what I go to instead. If I'm fishing the drop shot and I want to fish it pretty much static or hanging around a structure like I was talking about earlier, then I might opt to fish it a small-ish creature bait on the hook of the drop shot. Now, there's a couple of sort of my go-tos. I will sort of chop and change. Uh, I like to try new things when it comes to, to anything in lure fishing, really. But uh, these are those, one of those things that I will cycle through. At the moment, I've got two go-tos. This is, I'm going to hold this up for the camera, but I will try and do some close-ups as well. This is the Spro Hog in the 55 mil. There's also a 70 mil, which I will use, and I will vary the color depending on the clarity of the water or how I feel like the fish are feeding. Um, this is the red and black one. I think it's called a crayfish, something or other. Uh, which is quite a lovely, quite a nice uh, bait for canals. Uh, and sometimes I'll switch to, there's a pink one, and there's a yellow, bright yellow one, and there's some natural ones as well. So depending on the situation, I will change the color of this and change the size. If I want a chunkier presentation or a bait with a little bit more presence and I want it to sort of move a bit of water, then this is, tends to be my go-to. And this is the Z-Man TRD Bugs. Now this is in mud bug color, I think. Um, and again, on a drop shot, this is absolutely perfect. You can see those appendages at the back. You know, it won't take a lot of moving to get those things twitching and, and grab the attention of a nearby Xander. Uh, that little bit of bulk in the body, again, moves a bit more more, more water than the, the Spro Hogs. And that's when, you know, if I feel like that's the, the need for that in that situation, that's when I'll jump over to this. Now, all these things I've run through, aren't exhaustive. These aren't the only ways you can fish for UK Xander. I've caught them lots of different ways. Chatterbaits, crankbaits, um, you know, slow moving things like Texas rigs and chebs. This is just the way I prefer to fish them. So what I really want you to do is guys, get out there, try these, try your own ways. You know, you haven't got to copy someone else. If you think it might work on any given day, have a look at the water, assess what you're seeing and put it into practice. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Good luck fishing. See you next time.